And the worst thing is to get hooked up with somebody. Um, and, and, and the worst thing you can do is get hooked up with somebody and none of your needs are being fulfilled. That's the worst thing you can do is get hooked up with somebody who's still lonely. Y'all together, but you're lonely. You still got needs that need to be fulfilled, but y'all together. Because if you're with someone just because, because you're lonely, then what happens uh, to your love, what then, what, what then happens to your other needs, they either go unfulfilled or you find somebody else to fulfill them. When you get hooked up with somebody and you're trying to fulfill, okay, going out, he fulfilled that need. Well, you got other needs that he ain't touching. That you either go have to this deal with not getting fulfilled, or you go end up finding somebody who fulfills those needs that he ain't fulfilling. And a godly man doesn't want to be with anyone who doesn't fulfill all his needs. Because if I'm involved in a relationship and I know and, and I know complete or fulfill all her needs, I know they're going to either be unhappy with me. Watch this. If I don't fulfill all my partner's needs, number one, they're going to either be unhappy with me or they're going to find somebody else to fulfill those needs. Now, if I choose to stay in a relationship knowing that I'm not fulfilling their need, that's made me selfish. I don't care about you need this, but I want you to stay with me anyway. And I'm not qualified to fill your need. So now because I decide to stay with you and I don't completely fill all your needs, that makes me selfish. I care less about your needs because you might be fulfilling all my needs but I'm not fulfilling yours. Or, or, I might be satisfied with my needs and not being there. I just, hmm. And so, and so, I, you know, God and man want to be really careful about not completing, uh, or, or, or completing all her needs because especially all the stuff that's going on around now, you don't need nobody that you can make fulfill that need. And they tiptoeing out on you and because you don't quite fulfill all his needs. And then he's tiptoeing out on you. And then he come home with something. But you won't want to let him go because you're not fulfilling all his needs. So you just gonna settle for him to tip and toe out. So when God designed Eve, he designed Eve because Adam was incomplete. So Adam is is incomplete without Eve, and Eve is also incomplete without her Adam. They both need each other. <coughs> That's why men and women are different, so they can complete each other. Two women can't complete each other. Two men can't complete each other. That's why we made different. So we can complete each other. That's why a puzzle. Well, that's why a puzzle doesn't have two of the same pieces because every piece was designed for a purpose to go in a designated place. Guess what? I brought a puzzle. Now, this puzzle is complete, right? Let's say I take this piece off, but I need this piece to complete this puzzle. It has been designed to go in that spot to complete the puzzle, right? Our problem is, we try to find other pieces that look good, but that quite don't make the cut to go in there. So, now, if I start cutting pieces off, then you know how So now 
listen to somebody who's speaking his language. So first, you have to you have to understand his communication of love and then be able to communicate his expression of love. So let's deal with, with five ways a godly man communicates love. Look at the characteristics of love of God. Now remember, I said a godly man got the same characteristics as God. So now let's look at some of the characteristics that a godly man communicates. Communicates love. One, when we look at the characteristics of God, God is a giver. Everybody say he's a giver. He's a giver. He's a giver. So watch this. So one way a godly man may communicate his love is by gifts and being a good giver. One way he will communicate the language he's speaking is by gifts or being a, or being a giver. When a man expresses his love by being a giver, most times he's a good provider. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> now, when he's a giver and his love language, watch this. If he's a giver and his love language is to be a giver,
when you know that he, his actions, you see, our problem is we don't know how to communicate that language. So we end up offending the person because we don't know how to effectively communicate that language. But when his way of communicating is by his acts of service, one way to offend him is by saying what he's not doing. When you look around and he's done the clean, clean, the paint the house, the wash your car, the wash your clothes, and then you complain about that, you know, he didn't buy you a gift from the mall. But that's not his way of communicating. When his way of communicating is by his acts of service. He washed your car, but he didn't take you to the mall. But you can let me take you to the mall, but he don't wash your car. And so a lot of times, we end up missing the boat because we don't know how to communicate effectively.
there's a protagonist, uh, his, his, great, uh, his, his greatest love language is by intimacy, not sex. Y'all do know that you think. You know that's different between sex and intimacy. Intimacy deals with foreplay, hugging, touching, uh, inner, trying to, you know, trying to set the mood. Just to make you feel special. They like touching. They like romance. They're very passionate. They're always touching and caressing you. Whenever you walk out of the room, you got to touch you. No, no. And then notice, notice. When he does that, The worst thing you can do is when he's expressing how much he loves you by touching you, is to reject him. Or to seem uninterested. Or like you don't feel like being bothered. I got a headache. Well, I'm not trying to have sex. I'm just trying to hold you. I don't think you're right. I'm right here. And the worst thing you can do with a man, a godly man that's trying to show you how much he loves you by touching you, is to pull away from them by expressing or uh, uh, communicating uh, 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 to them that you reject their touching. Because that's their way of saying that I love you. Now, we got five things, five things, right? Uh, what was the first one? Get it. One way to communicate is get it. Acts of service, yes. affirmation, quality time, time. Physical, physical touch, touch. not sex, intimacy. Intimacy. Yeah. Intimacy. Yeah. intimacy. Now, we got five languages, watch this, five languages that are God. So when you have five languages that godly men communicate, uh, their expression of love. Now some men may possess all five languages. Some men may express all five. Some godly men may possess only a few. But your job, women, is to figure out which language he is communicating. Watch this. Which one he's communicating and which language he is communicating the loudest. All right. Some may communicate all five of them. Some may only communicate one. But it's your job to find out which one he's communicating. And then you got to understand the language that he's communicating. Because if that's what he's communicating, watch this, if that's what he's communicating and you're not speaking his language, somebody else may be speaking a language that he may understand. If his language is affirmation, but you feel like he don't deserve to be told that night. And then so society over there be like, hey, So you're 
job is to understand the language that they're expressing the most. Because if you're not willing to communicate that language, trust me, there is somebody out there that's talking the same language. And you never want to, you never want them to start talking the language, that language to somebody else when all you have to do is just try to understand that language and speak their language. Then you want to get mad and, and then get crazy and post them and be stalking them.
refuse to hear the language and speak the same language. And then when somebody else started speaking the language, by that time it got too late. Y'all good? Yeah. Let's give God a hand up.